Well, good morning, everyone. I know you've been here a little bit since Saturday, I think. Uh, and uh, thanks for thanks for being here. Thanks for doing what you're doing, uh, particularly uh, not only in the training and the activism that you're engaged with, but hopefully you'll be successful in convincing our friends on Capitol Hill um, uh, on tomorrow, right? Tomorrow's a lobby day. Uh, to support the agenda that, that one's been so active at. at. Uh, I've been associated with one since 2008, I guess, 2007, uh, and, and particularly on the uh, efforts to ensure that voters understand the stakes on the issues around development, global poverty, HIV, uh, and, and global health needs. Uh, but I'm here, as Ben noted, chiefly uh, today as a member of the UN High-Level Panel for the Post-2015 uh, Development Agenda, and I'll talk a little bit about that and I explain that. Um, and I guess I'm here to, as a person who knows a little bit of something about Washington, D.C. and the dysfunctionality right now, so I'm happy to take some questions of, uh, about that. And finally, I'm here as someone who hopes uh, to leave a more equitable uh, and sustainable world to you, to your kids, and to my grandchildren. So uh, again, I will try to be shorter than Ben Affleck and less rambling, uh, <laughs> but I want to give you a little bit of sense of what this what this panel process is all about, and then we have some time for questions. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, and I hope to solicit your thoughts as well about our work and what we, we should be doing. Uh, this panel was formed last uh, last summer. Uh, I was appointed to it in August. Uh, it is part of a bigger project uh, at the UN uh, that will feed into the, to the member state process uh, to try to create a development agenda post-2015. Uh, but the Secretary General appointed a panel of 27 of us that's led by David Cameron, the Prime Minister of the UK, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, the President of Liberia, and President Minahota, the President of, of uh, Indonesia. And so if you look at where our meetings have been, <laughs> you understand uh, that the co-chairs have uh, good control over the process. We've, we met in New York, we met in London, uh, we met in, like, in Monrovia a couple of weeks ago, and then we're meeting in Liberia, and then we've added one more meeting in New York to finalize our report. It's a very rapid process to try to assess uh, what has been effective uh, in the MDGs, which were originally uh, part, uh, came out of the growth of a, the Millennium Development uh, Statement that was done in 2000. Uh, and then this uh, idea of focusing development on a core set of goals uh, was really at the heart of it. I think that most people who have observed this, and you're, you're a sophisticated audience, uh, have uh, concluded that this was helpful to kind of create momentum behind a key set of drivers and goals, not only uh, to influence what uh, uh, development assistance would look like and shape that, but to uh, really align uh, the, ho the, the country's uh, governments uh, in uh, support of a, of a uh, series of key goals to try to uh, make progress on development, cut the uh, level of extreme poverty in half, uh, and, and uh, do other things that were, that were really uh, quite critical. The, uh, there is also uh, a process that works alongside this, or several processes that work alongside the high-level panel, um, one of which comes out of the Rio process on sustainability. So there is something at the UN called the Open Working Group process, and we're trying to kind of blend and, uh, and, and, and create synergy between those two things. The Open Working Group process is a, is a uh, post-real uh, 20th anniversary of the uh, Rio Declaration, which uh, is, a, was, is looking really at the question of sustainability and how you uh, uh, kind of anchor development in a, in a sustainable future. And then there's a whole uh, other uh, uh, set of UN processes that involve the member states, the UN Development Program and, and others that are trying to gather information, ultimately to be really put before the UN General Assembly so that there's global consensus about what can uh, uh, be achieved and what the top drivers and the, and the, and the, the highest priorities are for, the, for uh, global development. Our panel, I think, quickly uh, uh, 
consolidated around a vision and a responsibility to end extreme poverty in all its forms uh, in the context of that sustainable development agenda that I mentioned, and to put in place the building blocks of sustained prosperity for all. Uh, the folks uh, at ONE uh, have been great partners in the global effort to promote and act on that vision, uh, and I'm honored uh, that they asked me to come here today, and as I said, we've been, we've been good partners uh, 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 for, for many years. Uh, I think people who uh, care about ending global poverty, really, who are focused on advocacy, had to have their spirits lifted a little bit when the President, in his State of the Union uh, to, uh, speech two weeks ago, said that progress in the most impoverished parts of the world enriches us all, in many places, people live on a little more than a dollar a day, so the United States will join with our allies to eradicate such extreme poverty in the next two decades. By connecting people, more people to the global economy, empowering women, giving our young and brightest minds new opportunities to serve, and helping communities to feed, power, and educate themselves. Uh, by saving the world's children from preventable deaths, and by realizing the promise of an age big generation. One pretty succinct paragraph uh, in a speech it didn't get a lot of attention in the, in the post-speech analysis, but I think it was a very important commitment of the President and the United States government to an agenda that's highly consistent uh, with where we're trying to go uh, on this panel. They're very, uh, those are very big ticket items, uh, ending extreme poverty within two decades, eliminating, eliminating preventable childhood deaths, shaping an AIDS-free generation, but President Obama's uh, bold vision uh, is uh, uh, not really pie in the sky. It's an achievable set of goals. I think one of the things that we need to do and what you need to help do is convince uh, the global public and the American public uh, specifically, and I met a, one of our friends from Canada here, so uh, people across the globe uh, that uh, the, the agenda that's emerging uh, from this UN process, from our work on the high-level panel, uh, uh, is really achievable. And as we look at the successor to the Millennium Development Goals, we can get this job done. But we need to uh, establish clear goals and targets beyond that. We have to be ambitious and pursue an agenda that resonates with the poorest of the poor, north, south, east, and west. This is a universal uh, agenda that I think is emerging uh, from this work. Uh, again, to look backwards at, at what, and what occurred in 2000, there was a sense of partnership, but it was the north uh, providing uh, 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 assistance uh, to, to countries in the south. I think now, I think we recognize, uh, first of all, that there's certainly pockets of extreme poverty that are spread around the world. Uh, and uh, that we have a kind of global ob obligation uh, to try to create some universal goals that uh, get to zero with respect to a number of, the, uh, of these challenges. Uh, I think there's been a clear recognition that uh, the original MDGs need to be uh, modified to reflect a world that's changed a great deal from 2000 and will change even more dramatically uh, by 2030. Uh, one of the most, I think, important uh, changes uh, uh, is the need uh, for inclusion and transparency in developing the, the, uh, uh, the development agenda, in, in creating the development agenda, as it were. Uh, in 2000, this was largely a process of, of experts uh, in the UN uh, system who created both a very strong structure for uh, what the what the, uh, the 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 overall emphasis should be, and then a series of of uh, of, uh, of targets and uh, and goals. Uh, I think that that won't work now. There there needs to be a conversation. People need to listen uh, to not only what works at a level of, of sort of an expert level, but there needs to be a real dialogue, uh, particularly with the uh, poorest of the poor around the world. Uh, there's a much wider range of voices that are uh, having input into this process. The UNDP is leading 100 country-led consultations. Uh, and panel members have been eager, I think, to reach out uh, to civil society uh, to, uh, to really kind of get out and, uh, and uh, engage with 
uh, not only bilateral donors, but uh, uh, as I said, uh, poor people, uh, philanthropy, the private sector. It's a much more inclusive uh, process. And I think the substantive agenda it has changed as well, and in part uh, because of that more inclusive process. Fostering sustained and inclusive economic growth, I think, has become a much clearer uh, uh, focus uh, of the uh, of the development agenda, creating decent jobs, improving living standards, addressing particularly youth unemployment. Uh, they're underemphasized uh, in the original MDGs and should be more prominent, I think, in the post-2015 agenda. We'd also like to achieve greater progress uh, in key areas like maternal and child mortality, hunger, water, and sanitation. I think panel members are outspoken in their desire to place more emphasis on other important issues, including in addressing inequality, uh, the role of transparency uh, and accountability of government institutions uh, in development, uh, the issues of peace and conflict were so much, uh, that, that's really, I think, if you look back and look at weak, weak and conflict-affected states, uh, where very little progress has been made since 2000, that's where you, where you find it. But we also have to worry about uh, environmental sustainability and increased connectivity. Uh, uh, that's a, let me tell you what I mean by that because I've kind of tried to emphasize that. Uh, it's difficult to be, if you, if you think about trying to build uh, strong, inclusive growth models, uh, particularly for the developing world, but also uh, for middle income countries and even high income countries, uh, it's difficult. Uh, to be included in, a, in an economy, even what an economy that's growing, when you have no points of connection uh, to the economy uh, or to the larger society. The extreme poor lead lives of extreme isolation, in my view. Uh, think about that lack of connection to the modern economy uh, and imagine that experienced by, by a young couple trying to scratch out an existence uh, in a rural village. They have no uh, assurance that their land rights are secure. Uh, if, particularly if the husband dies, the wife, the wife may not inherit the land. Uh, if the land is degraded uh, by environmental damage or by climate change, uh, they uh, easily fall uh, into food, uh, a, a state of food insecurity. They have no access to markets for their goods. They have no access uh, to modern energy, which would increase their Productivity uh, and add value to the to their toil. They have enormous. They make an enormous effort to gather fuel, but that usually uh, uh, results in cooking in unhealthy conditions and uh, adding to the, uh, the to the impact on uh, on their health. The government may provide a skilled birth attendant uh, if the wife is pregnant, but they have no practical way to travel to to get to the to to that. Uh, birth attendant if the wife goes into labor. The kids may have access to schools, uh, but without a qualified primary school teacher. Uh, their adolescent daughter may not have access to reproductive health care. The, uh, the choice is often to remain in hopeless conditions uh, in a remote village or to move to an urban slum. Once they get to the city, there's a good chance they will lack uh, access to sanitation. If they try to work, they may lack legal identity. Uh, which means that they'll be exploited by their employers. They certainly will have little access to social protection and to a justice system uh, that can redress abuse. Uh, women and girls may be subject to sexual exploitation with little or no hope uh, of having uh, access to uh, a, a system that can take them out of that condition. As I've said to my fellow panelists, building in more connect connectivity to the broader economy to the modern economy and to the broader society will not only create more equity and justice, but uh, connecting uh, and developing uh, the bottom of the pyramid, if you will, to create the, the to have conscious efforts to connect uh, people at the bottom will create the conditions for stronger and more sustainable growth uh, for those countries as well.